You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Soleri and today we're going to be talking about pushing through. We've all been there, right? There's these times where we just feel like we're almost walking in quicksand or we just keep hitting that brick wall. And you've got to find the energy. You've got to find the focus to push through to get to the other side. Sometimes I say it's like falling through the weeds or getting through the fire, but I really believe that we can all do that in our efforts to live full out. And I also want to make sure you stay with us. We have our inspirational guest coming up next, Chris Mitchell, who has really been through so many different events in his life, from being born with a very rare condition that caused him to have cataracts and a heart condition, to later on have a stroke. But yet, he is standing tall and strong and so positive. So how does he do that despite all those hardships in his life? He's going to tell us. Also, we want to make sure that you call in. That number is 800-333-001. And the thing is, we are all about today stepping forward, reclaiming our life. You know, if if you have been set back for one reason or another, things are possible. You can reclaim your life. You can have what you want. Now, sometimes it may have to look a little bit different than we initially set out to be, right? Sometimes we have to look at the world with variations of color, right? Same goes with a dream or a goal. It might not be the same way we initially set out for it to become. But sometimes the end result is even better. And sometimes you don't have to do it all on your own. That's part of what we do this show for is we make sure to, you know, be that source of strength for our listeners, but also give you ideas for how you can turn to others in your life to get the support to push on through uh, the difficult times. Also, make sure that if you do want to hear today's show again or any of our episodes, you can go to livingfullout.com. All of them are there for you. If you have Alexa, just call out Living Full Out Radio or put in your skill and it's there. Um, Or if you're on the go and you're walking, just go to the app store, look for Living Full Out Radio. I get a lot of different people that ask, you know, how can I hear the show? I missed the episode. I want to hear it again. So that's how you can do that. Now, trust me when I say I really get pushing through, right? There's being visually impaired. It is not a walk in the park. There are so many days that whether it's my low vision device, which is, which talks and maybe it stops talking and I'm like, ah, you know, cause if it doesn't talk, I can't see, I can't, I can't do what I need to do. Or maybe I'm somewhere, you know, unknown and I don't want to fall. I don't want to trip, but I don't know stairs. I don't know cracks in the foundation. I don't know if there's an object ahead of me. But I have to push through. So what my blindness has actually taught me is to just lead out there blindly, confidently, hope in my heart, (laughs) knowing that it's going to be okay. And so for me, that's my thing. Visually impaired, conquering that every day. And I know you have your thing too. It may be a financial crisis. It may be heartbreak. But again, we just have to believe in the good of others and we have to believe in ourselves. And sometimes when we feel like we're being more depleted than we are putting, you know, energy, good energy into our emotional piggy bank, we have to find ways to take our power back and get rejuvenated. Now, I'm getting word that we have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, thank you. Hi, how can I help you today? So um, I recently joined a company where I am responsible for building the team and attracting clients. And I know it takes time to establish a strong team and loyal clients. What would be a great start to establish a business business plan to help fulfill my company goals? Oh, that is such a great question. And trust me, I am sitting there right beside you because as the leader here of Living Full Out, uh, that company, I, I've had to kind of check myself along the years too. What I have found though, is you want to be invested in two goals, two dreams. One is the dream and the goal of the company and how, of course, all the different team members can contribute. 
based upon their talents, based upon their, their skill set. But at the other side of it, you want to be uh, involved in your team's goals and dreams. You know, what are they shooting for outside of work? You know, what is a physical goal they have? Maybe they want to run a marathon, you know. Maybe there's a certain goal endeavors for their career they'd like to achieve. Uh, maybe they have relationship goals. And a lot of times I find that career and personal, they really do mirror each other in the sense that you want to have the same tenacity for life as you do for career. You want to be a good crack the coder or troubleshooter in career as you are in life. So if you can be that champion, that cheerleader for them, now obviously a whole meeting can't necessarily be everyone telling their life story, but I even think sometimes having a question that allows people an opportunity to share, uh, you know, maybe something silly at the beginning of a meeting, like, you know, if you had a superpower, what would it be, right? Or do you have a mantra, phrase, or word that you live by? And what is that word? You know, kind of getting people talking just a little bit outside of the box of work into personality. Have you tried that? I tried thinking out of the box, but I just need a little bit more help with that. Well, I would do this. If you were to go online and search inspirational questions or you know, thought-provoking questions or conversational questions. There's so many. And maybe, you know, start every team meeting with a question. Get people talking. It could be something silly. Or maybe have a joke. You know, I, I mean, I'm not a big joke person myself. I can barely ever remember them. But, you know, starting with a joke at the beginning of every meeting, something that maybe is work-related that everybody would laugh at, you know, that, that might be a good way to break the ice. And then I really also believe in giving people inspirational feedback. You know, tell somebody they're doing a good job. You know, let them know when they choose a really good word. You know, let them know when they show up on time, when they, give, when they stay late and they give that extra effort. Because I know that even for me, when somebody says, you know, really like that video you did the other day, or I read your article, I thought it was really thought-provoking, you know, that just gives me a little bit of juice to keep on going because we all have long days. Have you considered those as well? Yes, I have. Okay. So what are you going to do? That next meeting, what are you going to do? For the next meeting, I want to do um, a, lou a Zoom lounge where, okay. um, because of this, this company that I'm working for and trying to build some teams, I was thinking of having my friends like support me and then they can bring their old friends as well. And then we can all talk about the meeting. Well, the only thing you want to do is just make sure that's a little bit monitored, okay? Just make sure that uh, you kind of set an intention for the meeting. I love forums. I love Zoom chats. I love that everybody can contribute. But it can also be one person stepping over another person, stepping over another person, and then it kind of becomes chaotic. So I would just kind of lead that meeting with some intention, um, you know, have some some goals, some, some takeaways. Um, but otherwise, I know you can do great. You know, I love that you're asking this question because it shows that you, you really want to grab that leadership role that you have and make the most of it. And I can tell that it's not just about work for you. You want to make an impact in the company, but also your team. And so for that, I, I'm impressed. I'm proud of you. Okay? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in. No problem. You have a great day. Thank you. And for everybody listening today, it, it is one of those things where you kind of got to think a day through. Now, you could be the CEO or the manager of a company like she is. You might be the CEO or the manager of your home. And with so many people being home these days, you kind of have to fill in the gaps of time there too, right? So when we talk about pushing through today, you want to look at your day. You want to look at your week and you want to anticipate what are the hurdles that are going to come up? You know, where are there areas of my week where I know that I need to step into the spotlight? I need to shine. I need to have that extra bit of energy to give to others or, or do my job well, right? And then you also want to look over the capacity of that week. You know, where is that downtime going to come in? Downtime for you to replenish your energy, replenish your mind, your body, your soul, but it's also time to get creative. So the conversation that she and I were just having 
like in the business world, that's pre-work, that's putting together the business plan. But in life, we also want to have a, a life plan. So figuring out what are your relationship goals? What are your workout goals? You know, what are some hobbies that you've been putting off? Let's not put them off. Let's push through. Now is the time. So stay with us. We're going to be taking more calls. Of course, we have Chris Milton coming up in our next segment. Today is all about pushing through as you strive to live full out. Know that this show is a safe place for you to bring your ideas, but also ask the questions that are keeping you up at night. Let's get past that kind of icky, yucky point where you feel, you know, not energetic, not inspired, and let's get you to a place where you're focused, productive, and loving your life. I'm Nancy Soleri. This is the Living Full Out Show. Stay with us. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I'd like kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Tomorrow? <laughs> Let's check with Mom. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Just make sure you have everything. Yep. Can we walk home? Yeah, how about a taxi? 233 North Maple, please. It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Also, find fun activities to do like boating and biking or camping and hiking. Plus, much more. It's all right in your naturehood. Best day ever. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Don't you wish that getting your child to eat right, move more, and spend less time in front of a screen could be as easy as pushing a button? It might not be that simple, but you do have more power than you know. And you can maximize that power with proven strategies, tips, and tools from the National Institutes of Health's We Can, or Ways to Enhance Children's Activity and Nutrition program. We Can offers all kinds of resources, including fun recipes and activities the family can do together to show you the way to live a healthier lifestyle. We're not saying it's easy. We are saying that it can be done. Take the first step today. Call 1-866-359-3226 for a free We Can Parents Handbook. And be sure to visit the We Can website at wecan.nhlbi.nih.gov for free information, too. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over until one day I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. 
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about pushing through those hard times in life. And I'm going to raise both of my hands because I know it's easier said than done. But that is why we bring you inspirational guests that really demonstrate getting through those weeds, getting through the fire, and coming out the other side with some good learning lessons they can teach us. And Chris Mitchell, wow, he's really been through it himself, and I don't want to give his whole story away, but especially someone like Chris, his hurdles, his hardships have really begun at birth all the way to today, and he's still learning. He's still growing. So I'd very much like to welcome Chris to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Happy to be with you. Now, Chris, you know, your your journey really started at birth. Uh, your mom actually had the German measles, didn't know it when she was pregnant with you. But when right. you were born, what did that cause you to have in terms of your condition? And how did that affect you? Well, when I was born, I was born with a couple of um, noticeable, obvious birth defects. One was a constricted aorta, which messed with the blood flow from my heart through my body. And I was also born with cataracts, which left my visit, vision at 2200 in my left eye and 2300 in my right eye. And I, to this day, I still am not able to really read out of my right eye. Well, I am right there, mister, with you, <laughs> because you know I'm <laughs> legally blind and you're ahead of me. I think I'm 2800 and 2600. I'm, I'm really far, far gone in that way, but I, I've always um, had a special place in my heart for, for anybody who kind of feels picked on or like an outcast or just can't find their way to fit in. And I know it was hard for you. There you were wearing the thick glasses. You were going to a special school, trying to also fit in mainstream. And, you know, while you may have not had the physical ability due to your heart condition and all that, you had a roaring mouth. <laughs> though you yes. really stood up for yourself and, and where <laughs> why was that like where did that come from okay uh, well maybe would not stand up for myself as much as wanted to break every rule and be defiant uh i was diagnosed with um adhd later in life and earlier it was considered a behavioral problem but it just came from me wanting to be determined to do whatever I wanted to do in life, uh, regardless of the rules and regardless of the limitations that were placed on me because of my disabilities. Well, and I can imagine that's got to be pretty frustrating when you can't put a name on it, right? You hadn't been diagnosed with right. ADHD then, and you're like, hey, I'm a good kid. I've just been given some, you know, different circumstances. Challenges. And exactly. And, you know, you did have two parents, but there was some abuse in the family. And you had also, you know, kind of weathered the storm of the awkwardness of just growing up, you know, in the early years in high school. But that defiant side of you really kind of came to a crossroad when in ninth grade, you decided to kick your teacher. But it ended up not uh, being I, a good idea. Or the principal. I'm sorry. Forget the teacher. You went even higher. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're going to kick somebody, go up to the top of the food Go chain. big. Go big. Actually, go principal. Absolutely, listeners, don't kick people. Don't, don't do that, please. It was why, a really why bad did idea. You, why did you kick well, the principal? Well, I came to school that morning, and I was in a bad mood. I don't remember why. And my first period teacher was going to send me to the principal's office because I was not, not behaving. And I knew that was going to get me Saturday morning detention. Now, I also knew my parents would ground me if I had Saturday morning detention. So I came up for a plan. Now, remember, I was 14 at the time. And my plan was, if I scare the principal, he'll leave me alone and he won't give me detention. So when he came in the room and walked up to my desk, I kicked him in the leg. My plan backfired because I got dragged, and I mean that literally, out of the classroom to the principal's office, and I did not get Saturday morning detention. I got expelled from high school on the yeah. 10th day of my freshman year. Yeah, and your and your mom and your dad were not loving that so much either. No. Uh, your mom was no. pretty much screaming and hitting you all the way home because she was so upset. 
Now, you know, in hindsight, though, when life gives us that challenge, that that moment, and yes, you got it, you know, you had to get kicked out of school for it, but you actually got put into a special school where there was a teacher that gave you life-changing advice. What was that? I did get placed into a school for kids that had behavior problems, and her name was Mrs. Lyons. I will never forget her. Because when any of us acted out in class, misbehaved, whatever we did, she said something in a very calm and soothing voice, like a mantra. She would say it over and over again. And those words were, I like you. I don't like your behavior. And up until that point, when I misbehaved, I was told, you're such a bad kid. I'm so disappointed in you. I'm so ashamed of you, which told me my behavior defined who I was. And Mrs. Lyons changed that thinking for me and possibly saved me from going further down a path of bad behavior and doing this interview today from a jail cell. So I'm very grateful to Mrs. Lyons and those words. Well, we love those good good teachers in the world. And you know what? That That little twist, that little nugget of insight propelled you to want to graduate with your class. You worked hard. You weren't perfect. You still made a few uh, anger mm-hmm. anger moments, got you in trouble, but you were pretty much walking the line, doing well, and you were able to graduate with your class, get fully caught up, and you were actually the first to do so. What did that mean to you? Well, yes, I was, um, from what I understand, the first to be allowed to return to my home high school after mm-hmm. being expelled. And what it meant to me was I accomplished something great. I was very proud of that. In fact, I was recognized by a Rotarian club in St. Louis for the most improved student from freshman year to my senior year. And it meant a lot to me because it showed me no matter what happens in my life, I can overcome anything. And it really helped me prepare for post high school and the rest of my adult life. Yeah, you almost wish you could go back in time and tell that third grader who's having early surgeries it's going to be okay. Tell that kid in detention right. you're going to be all right. You know, but but uh, that's really great that you're able to do that. And you were able to graduate, and then you were yeah. able to kind of find your way to college. But the ADHD, you know, obviously that had you very scattered, you know, not really having a routine, you know, kind of going off the cuff a lot of times. And so was it helpful finding out that diagnosis, you know, saying that you finally had Uh, a label for how you felt? It it did help to have that label and to know what was going on. And it allowed me to research and learn more about ADHD. And with the help of medicine, my point in my life, my fiance, eventually she became my wife, uh, helping me with that and learning what parts of the day I have to be very structured and what parts of the day I needed to be unstructured so I can bounce off the wall. So when I needed to be structured, I was not annoying the heck out of everyone around me. We all need those bounce off the wall moments. That's part of living full out, right? So you got to have that balance. Well, Chris, I want you to stay with us because we're going to continue your interview when we come back. Everybody today, just like Chris is demonstrating in his life, it's about pushing through those hard times so you can exhale and live full out in your way. Stay with us. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. We'll be back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. (laughs) Sounds that energize you. (laughs) And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless Emergency Alerts, now on many mobile devices. Use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov alerts. 
Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hello, my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, (laughs) and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really living. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ad Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Soleri, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want. And we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming But we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about pushing through. And the thing about pushing through hard times in your life is sometimes we can feel hopeless. We can wonder, will it ever happen? But that is why we pick inspirational guests such as Chris Mitchell today, who gives us the inspiration to know, hey, if he can do it, I can too. And so I'd very much like to bring Chris back to the show. Hello. Hi. Thank you again for joining us. So, Chris, you know, the, the thing I love about your story, what we covered in the last segment, is, you know, you you had, obviously, um, various health challenges. You, you had your ADHD, but you didn't know really what it was until later in life. But you rallied. You took that advice from your teacher. You ran with it, and you graduated with your class. And I think that as you grew older and you just kind of matured, you started to find that balance between having times where you could be free and silly and and boisterous, but then times where you had to be more focused. And you kind of allowed yourself time, time to get through college. 
years to get through college. You know, it wasn't a four year thing. It was, you know, short of 20 years. But, you know, the thing is, is you allowed yourself time. But I can also kind of appreciate the fact when you got into another argument with a dean, your dean at your school, and you got expelled again, was that, did that feel like a setback? Did that feel like, come on, I've come so far? Yes, it certainly did. I was three courses away from having an AS and an AA in radio broadcasting and computer science. And I was so close. And I finally was getting A's and B's in my courses. I saw the finish line. And then there was an, I smarted off to my English instructor. The next day, he and I patched things up. Unfortunately, there was an incident report sent to the college dean. And she was not as forgiving as my English instructor. And the meeting did not go well at all. And I left the meeting a former student of that college. Mm. And, and, and in that moment, I mean, here you are, 35, you're trying to get your career going. And I can imagine that was heartbreaking. I can imagine it was like, okay, well, what am I going to do now? Well, the problem is when we say to life, what am I going to do now? Life gives us a to-do, right? <laughs> you, yeah. you actually at 36 had a planned surgery. And right. when we do a surgery, we get all that legalese paperwork, right? We think oh, yeah. none of the worst case scenario is ever going to happen, but <laughs> yeah. it did. Can you tell us what happened? Yes. When I did get expelled from college, I also lost my job working at the college. And I did ask, what am I going to do now? And I was on eBay. So I started building an eBay business and it was going pretty well. And I, was, I got engaged. And, but there was one thing I needed to do. And that was to have uh, cardiac surgery. I needed to um, have surgery on my constricted aorta. And when I went in for the hospital to have that, they gave me all these forms, scary stuff, DNRs. And I thought, this will never happen to me. Nothing can go wrong because I've had heart surgery before. Went fine. Well, two days after my surgery, when I was taken off the vent in the CVICU, Cardiovascular Intensive Care Unit, they wanted me to stand, and I swung my legs over the side of the bed, slid my feet to the floor, and instead of standing, bam, I hit the hard linoleum floor. I did that mm. twice. That's when they decided something may be wrong, got an MRI done, and I found out in time that I had survived an ischemic stroke to my spinal cord, which robbed me of my ability to run, walk, even stand, turn myself in my bed, or even feed myself initially after the injury. It's a lot to take in, a lot to take in if you're you in the moment, and even a lot to take yeah. in for us to hear that story because it's just another setback, another reason for you to have to push through. Now, this is where I love your story, right? Because you had a choice. You had a choice of going into despair, hopelessness, or you know what? Digging in and finding your way, being getting back to being independent. And I, what I think is so right. clever is how you did that. For example, you could not dress yourself, but you made a game out of it in your efforts to get stronger and better. What did you do? Well, I had trouble getting dressed, and it was taking me 40 minutes using all that adaptive equipment they gave. Now, I've never been a coordinated person, even from day one of my life, and, and putting these adaptive tools in my hands was not helping at all. So I said, I'm going to learn how to do this on my own using my hands and, you know, the way I did it before. And I started timing myself. Okay, today it took me 40 minutes. Tomorrow I'm going to get dressed, even if it's one minute faster. And I kept doing that over and over again. And today I can get dressed in under three minutes. Wow, I don't even I think up. I can compete with you. That's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty, pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> And, it's not you a know, competition, it's just an exhibition. Oh, you're funny. And, you know, the, no, the thing no is... Yes, from Letterman. <laughs> yeah, you, and you know, the thing is, I was at Target the other day, and I thought mm -hmm. of you once again, because in your efforts to learn how to stand and learn how to walk and get that mobility back, you actually turned to something so simple, like a Target shopping cart. How did that come about? Well... I was in outpatient uh, rehab after being in a rehab hospital, and I was in outpatient rehab for about six months, and I was not making a lot of progress, and my insurance company 
they gave up on me. But I did not want to give up on myself. So one day, it was several years after it, my wife and I went to Target, and they had these cool scooters in there. And I thought, that'd be great to ride one of those, go to the store independently. But it's stupid to have my wife bring me in in my wheelchair and take the wheelchair back to the car and all of that. So one trip, we parked, and I saw a red Target cart. And I said, dear, bring me that red uh, grocery cart. And she did. And I held on to it. And it was not pretty, but I taught myself how to walk from the car using that grocery cart to get into Target so I can ride one of those scooters. And that was the beginning of me teaching myself how to use a walker, which is uh, what you normally see with two wheels and two stable legs. And today I'm using a rollator, which is like a walker with four wheels to get around independently. And then you have your motorized scooter when you need it to go far distances. Right. So because of my cardiac issue, it's better if I don't walk too much and elevate my blood pressure. But yes, I do have a motorized scooter. But like like I said, I like the way your mind thinks. I like the way you work. And you once again, you rallied because the stroke and, and, and what happened to your spinal cord, it affected your ability to grasp, to hold things. And even right. a simple uh, night out at Applebee's taught you how to correct mm-hmm. that. What was that scenario? Well, it didn't really teach me how to correct it, but it set a new rule at Applebee's. I was sitting at the barn having a Pepsi, and I had what I call spasticity, where my fingers and my hand would just suddenly jerk. And my glass was in front of me, and I hit the glass, shot it across the bar, and almost hit the bartender with a uh, glass full of soda. At that point, Applebee's now has a policy. I only get plastic cups at Applebee's. Oh, (laughs) Well, and that's okay. That's okay, right? That's okay plastic, me, yeah. yeah, plastic is good. Nothing wrong with that. But <laughs> but again, what I what I appreciate so much about each of these examples is that, you know, you kind of felt it through, you got creative, you kind of figured out, okay, how can I still, you know, enjoy a night out with my wife, but yet not, you know, have a spasm and have something go wrong? You know, how can right. I learn how to walk again? How can I get dressed on my own? So, you know, kudos to you for figuring out all those methods on your own. And I know that one thing that is really important to you is, you know, just that we all really understand each other's story. Because if someone had looked at you far back then, you know, when you were in high school and so forth, they might have thought, you know, he's not going to ever do anything with his life, right? Because he got, you know, he got kicked out. Or someone might say, oh, that kid is acting out. When people act out, it can be for a reason. It can be a health condition. It can be abuse in the home. And and share with us why that is so important to you. Uh, back in high school and, and all the stuff I went through in my life, all the things that happened before my ischemic stroke, my spinal cord, and how I pushed through all of those prepared me for the, pu- the biggest push I had to do in my life and that was my spinal cord injury. What helped me with that and doing that was um, something I learned in college during my many years at college. I took a Psych 51 course, and the teacher talked about functional thinking and fixed thinking. Fixed thinking is you can look at a hammer and you see one purpose for it. That it can hammer in a nail. Functional thinking is you can look at that hammer and say, hmm, it can put a window in my wall in the living room. And that's what I did. I looked for functional ways to use everyday things to do what I wanted to accomplish in my life, like that grocery cart at Target. I just started creating my own therapy and my own ways to push through whatever obstacle that was stood between me and the success I wanted in my life. Well, Chris, you are so amazing. And I I know that you're going to go on to get even more creative and keep conquering more milestones. But... You've given us so much to ponder today and really take with us and apply to our lives. So thank you so much. Go out there. Keep living full out. I know you will. (laughs) And thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for having me today. And for everybody listening today, it is about pushing through. It is about getting creative, being functional in the way that we approach life, you know, how we can crack the code of life, how we can find peace how we can live life full out and and just smile and know that, well, maybe every dream didn't come true, but we achieved the ones that mattered. And remember to support others in your life. You know, take today after this show and 
look look for somebody in your life that is struggling somebody who hasn't heard today's show who didn't get the same insights you just got and remind them to push through to not give up it's really important and also remember that if you have an inspirational story we'd very much like to hear from you and perhaps you have you on the show just like chris and so make sure to go to connect at livingfullout.com share with us your contact information let us know what you've overcome in your life and we'll definitely see about having you on the show as a guest it's all about supporting each other as we live full out so stay with us we'll be right back i'm nancy Soleri. this is the living full out show Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, what? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. The following message is about Medicaid and CHIP, free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. Enrollment is open year-round. Hey, voice lady, give me the mic. Um, okay. Hey, DJ, let's switch up the music. That's better. So listen up, moms and dads out there. There are these programs called Medicaid and CHIP. They offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids. Things like doctor and dentist visits, prescriptions, and shots are covered. All the stuff that keeps kids like me healthy and in charge. So, as you can tell, a covered kid is a confident kid. And it means confident parents, too. To learn more about affordable health coverage for your family, visit healthcare.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. That's 1-877-543-7669. Yep, you could do something big for your family today because enrollment is open year-round. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And Sophia. They're going to jump out of trees. You can't stop them. They'll go down the slide head first. They'll make parachutes out of sheets. They'll balance on things that are impossible to balance on, like the back of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. They'll run into walls. They'll climb things that won't hold their weight. They'll put their fingers in places where they could get smashed. They'll drive their tricycles down steep hills. They'll bounce balls off their faces. They'll step on each other. They'll jump on each other. They'll invent whole new ways to put themselves in jeopardy. But one of the most dangerous things kids will do happens while they're sitting perfectly still. Kids who ride in a car without a booster seat are much more likely to suffer serious or fatal injury during a crash than kids in boosters. But amazingly, 80% of all kids who need them aren't in them. After a toddler seat and until they're four foot nine, boost your kids and don't let them down. Go to BoosterSeat.gov to learn more about the importance of boosters. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Have you ever lost a cat? And have you ever wanted to get your cat back after you lost it? I'm Andrew Hoffman. I invented the lost cat magnet. Just turn it on and lost cats stick to it. Just listen to one satisfied cat. That's proof. You should invent stuff too. But remember, don't do a lost cat magnet. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, the National Inventors Hall of Fame Foundation, and the Ad Council. We are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. Enroll, we say, we want you to be okay. Enroll, we say, take care, people, for goodness sake. 
Health insurance is now affordable and covers prescriptions, hospitalizations, and preventive care. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn more. And take care, people. Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. When it comes to pushing through, you want to, number one, remember to be good to yourself. During hardships, you want to make sure to find time where you're peaceful and also in action. And be vulnerable with people. Let them know what you're going through. Seek support. You don't have to live full out alone. It's better when you can celebrate and get through hard times together. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show, and we're talking about pushing through. And when you Consider the idea of pushing through. That doesn't mean that you have to take a gigantic leap and achieve a huge milestone overnight. That means that every day you push it just a little bit further. You know, there's someone on our team here at Living Full Out. She's an athlete, very talented, and she always wants to give 100%, but plus one. She wants an extra little bit to get her past that finish line. And it always stayed with me when she told me that in one of our meetings, because I think as we consider pushing through, sometimes we all need that one plus one to get through that long day, you know, that tough meeting, sitting there through criticism, conflict, whatever. And also, I want you to remember the words that you say to yourself and the words that you say out loud, so in your mind and outside, because it's very powerful. If you say, I'm never going to get there. It's hopeless. You know, you're basically telling your mind and you're telling that your heart that it's not going to work out. But if you say, you know what, I- I'm going to give it my all. And you know what, I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to give it my best. Or I, I feel proud of what I achieved. And I think I can do it. I'm confident I will. You know, you want to find words that will resonate with your heart and, and give you that plus one, that extra energy to push through. Now, I'm getting word from our producer. We're going to go check in with a caller. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. How can I help you? Um, so I was just calling with advice on a question that I've been struggling with. So uh-huh. I'm immunocompromised, so I've been staying home in order to be safe and really limiting my exposure outside. But in December, I'm graduating college and fear finding a job will be difficult, not only because of the virus, but because of being immunocompromised puts me at risk for going out to look for a job. So did you have any advice on how to safely go about finding a job while being immunocompromised? Well, and what is your uh, career goals? What, what are you getting a degree in? Um, so I'm getting my degree into business management, and my hope is to go into HR. Okay. Okay. So there actually is great news for you. This is great news for anyone in your circumstances, anybody who has, a, you know, maybe disability where, you know, it's difficult to get into certain office spaces. Maybe they don't have ramps or they don't have elevators or whatever. If there's anybody right now who has had a circumstance where maybe being in a workplace is not healthy or it may be difficult just ability wise, right now, Many, many companies are opening up to a lot of remote positions, more than they ever have before. And I was actually just telling someone here today, here in the studio, um, about sites like Upwork.com or Guru.com. Or, you know what, don't be afraid to contact a company that, that you'd like to work for in your local area and put together that resume. Let all your different um, talents and skills shine you know, you don't have to go into your circumstance. You can just say, I am looking for a, a position where I can do HR remotely. And these are all the ways that I can contribute. You also might consider Googling, um, because now this has been the chatter now for many, many months, and it will be for a while, you know, Googling, you know, how are companies doing HR remotely? 
what does that look like? You know, what are the duties of, of what someone can do remote and not be in the office? When you know what those duties are, put those in your cover letter. So you're kind of speaking their language. Hey, I really like what your company's about. I have a lot, a lot of passion for HR. I, I you know, can do all these skills and you know those are all the ones that can be done remotely. I'd love an opportunity to do a Zoom meeting with you and see what's possible. And then you might even go to LinkedIn, have more conversations. But I'll tell you this, my friend, you, the world is yours to have in this new environment that we're in from 2020 to 2021. You just have to get creative. Can you try doing some of those? Um, actually, that's really good advice. I didn't, I went to LinkedIn because I have a LinkedIn account and my school has, um, links to go and find jobs, but I always thought I would make more of an impression if I went in, but the advice that you gave was actually really good and I didn't think about doing that. Well, you know what? I can tell you, I'm not looking at you right now and I can tell you, you're a leader. You got passion for what you want to do. You're very kind and good hearted and I'm not even looking at you. I'm not even in the same room as you. So you don't have to be in person. Just get on that Zoom call, let your personality shine, and your skills will stand for themselves. You'll do great, no doubt. Thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for your advice. You were really nice, and I'm definitely going to take the advice you gave me and use it going forward. So thank you so much. Thank you. And for everybody listening today, it's about living full out, right? Push through. Know that what you want in life is possible. The entire Living Full Out family thanks you. We got Eilish, we got Rich, we got Kaylee, we got Caleb. We believe in you. Here's you Living Full Out. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Soleri. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.